Welcome once again. My name is Kanan Irons. I'm a 3D printing application engineer with Hawkridge Systems. And today we have joining us Brad Dermott, who is the marketing director for the Americas with AMT. And Brad is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to all things technical regarding AMT equipment. And since this is a very quick session, we want to jump right into the agenda. So it'll be a very simple uh, agenda this morning. We're going to look at a vapor smoothing overview and then an automated bead blasting technology overview. Uh, then we'll end it with a Q&A. And if you do have questions, be sure to drop them into the Q&A tab. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Brad. So take it away, Brad. All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you for the introduction, Kanan. Uh, thumbs up that everyone that you can hear me good. All right. Excellent. Um, thank you all for taking the time here. Um, we're going to dive right in with the short time that we have. Um, so we're here to talk about post-processing of additive manufacturing. And what we do here at AMT is that we specialize in this particular step of additive manufacturing. So as you all may know, uh, there, there's quite a process to move to a final part. So this is kind of a the lifespan of a part coming out of a printer. Uh, the, the first part that you see there is an as printed part still covered in powder. There's several steps that need to be done to the part to get to this after automated uh, post-processing step that you see on the far right. And so what we do is, is we eradicate uh, the manual finishing processes when it comes to 3D printing and providing a more automated post-production type solution for uh, some of these problems. And so I just kind of want to set the stage here with an, kind of what we're working with. So we specialize in uh, powder-based technologies. Uh, we have solutions that for depowdering and vapor smoothing that can kind of tailor to different technologies. But just for the sake of, of this, I'd like to go through what it would look like to post-process depowder powder-based uh, technology. So this here is an example of a production or, or industrial 3D printer, uh, HP MJF printer. And then this is what you see on the, the right. This is an as printed part. Uh, you can see that it's of course still covered in powder. And so we don't see the final product. And so the first step would be depowdering those parts, removing all of that powder off and getting you to a relatively finished pop part. But the issue is that that finished part isn't exactly finished all the way. There's a very rough surface to it. Uh, there's high porosity just based on how it's printed. There's that partially fused powder on the outside that gives it that rough finish, uh, that high porosity that can uptake water or oils and, and things like that. Um, and within that surface area, uh, there can be crack initiation sites that just come from the printing technology uh, where there was stresses during the print. All of this kind of stuff is, is handled on the surface of the part and can cause imperfections, can cause failures, and really causes a lot of uh, labor to be required to mitigate and control and fix these type of uh, blemishes, if you will, on the surface of a printed part. And so what we've done at AMT is we attack this problem with uh, automated chemical vapor smoothing. So we started our company around around chemical vapor smoothing. And this is our patented technology that takes an as printed part post clean. And we take that rough surface, that porous surface, and we actually smooth and heal and, and resurface the outside of these parts. Uh, what we're doing here is, is almost reflowing the polymer that we're using to re, uh, seal the surface, remove the porosity and actually strengthen the parts. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the, there's rough porosity and crack initiation sites. We're able to fix and heal all of that within one single step. These two systems that you see here is the Post Pro SF50 and SF100. Uh, the 150 are the different processing chamber sizes. But essentially what we're doing is we would load a batch full of parts in here. We would introduce a vapor, condense on the surface of the part, reflow, and then we would extract all of the vapor out of the chamber and off the part. 
So at the end of the cycle of 90 to 120 minutes, you have a completed part production ready with all of those fixes that I mentioned on the surface, all with an automated solution. And to kind of bring that into realization here, there's three main pillars that we focus on for the value added to an additive manufactured part using chemical vapor smoothing. One of those key things is the fact that this part now has an injection molded like surface finish. Because we're smoothing and sealing that surface porosity, we can now create a much stronger part and give you really good texturing. And the benefit of these systems is that we can control different dials or parameter settings within the system to achieve different finish levels, different surface roughnesses, and in some cases, uh, different texturing as well. Depending on an application or material, we can kind of adjust and tune what that texturing would look like to really compete with injection molding and keep that complexity of 3D printing. And at the same time, we're enhancing the material properties because we're removing those crack initiation sites. We're actually improving things like elongation at break, flexural strength, and tear resistance for flexible materials, for example, all because we're healing and fixing that surface, uh, which is where all of those failures tend to, to happen. And then you can see in the image, it's a great representation of, a, of sealing that surface as well. Um, not only just surface tension here with the water sitting on it, but including applications that are under pressure, uh, moving air or liquids using pressurized uh, forces. The sealed surface can prevent leaks uh, or oil uptake or things like that, depending on application. And so what we have here, come on, there we go. Um, this is a very zoomed in image of the surface. And what you can see is throughout this incremental melting of material, this is kind of what I was referencing that you can achieve different surface finishes based on your material. And this is technology agnostic. So this is a, a lot of this is driven around uh, powder base, but this is also great for filament technologies, uh, filament materials uh, of all kinds, whether it's straight thermoplastic or even composite as well with carbon fiber. It does a great job for all of those. And it's it's a really, really good solution to eliminate the labor involved to post-process a lot of these materials and get these same properties. You know, the downside is you're gonna have to do one part at a time. So it can take a long time to get through a, a full build of parts. Um, and so this is a really, really quick and efficient way and a very safe way to post-process your parts to get these incredible uh, high-performing parts with, with really nice finishes. And as we, uh, as a company, have been moving through benchmarking for customers, uh, our end users are using this technology, people are testing it. We also noticed a difference in uh, we'll call cleanliness quality. There's a different level from each uh, facility, service bureau, customer that, you know, they depowder different ways. And in order to vapor smooth a part successfully, we need a very clean part prior to vapor smoothing. So at AMT, what we did is we wanted to solve this issue as well. Depowdering has always been a very manual focused operation as well. Yes, you're using the automation of a blasted nozzle throwing media at it. But again, it's one person standing in front of a cabinet for hours a day, depowdering one part at a time. So there's a lot of variability involved around that. You know, the operator could be tired, uh, they could be distracted and miss some areas. So there's just inconsistencies when it comes to depowdering. So that's what we wanted to provide as well, is not only a solution to automate this step, but just provide far more consistent results when it comes to cleaning uh, powder-based technology parts prior to chemical vapor smoothing. And so what you'll see here are the three different solutions that we have, uh, that we can offer the industry here. Starting from the left is our PostPro DP Max, our highest throughput for high production environments. The DP Pro, which is our most versatile depowdering solution, which is a combination of automated depowdering and then also manual blasting. If you can see on the left side of the cabinet, there's a separate circuit for manual blasting. So it's kind of a, a two-in-one. 
And then the PostPro DP, which is a great fit for service bureau environments, R&D, where lower volume uh, operations are, are happening. And all of these systems have a Cyclone built in the back, which is great for uh, separating our blast media from the powder and dust that we're removing from the parts, making sure that what we're throwing at the parts stays very clean and consistent. So your efficiency is uh, incredibly high and your throughput is really quick. So these cycle times can range between 10 to 15 minutes uh, when it comes to depowdering. And now I have a little bit of a video here that I'm going to kind of play in the background. Um, but again, with these solutions, not only can it be used for depowdering and cleaning your parts, but a simple change of media. And now all three of these solutions can be switched over to shot blasting as well, using heavier medias like ceramic bead, steel shot, things like that to kind of pre-surface your parts again uh, prior to chemical vapor smoothing and what you'll see here in the video is our dp pro and I, I really wanted to showcase this one because both between the chemical vapor smoothing and depowdering especially this dp pro all are operated are around a saved recipe which is holding parameters that we've selected for different materials and different geometries to not only use this automated solution but to automate the automated solution if that makes any sense where you 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 preset what you know and now it's all right it's just going to be automatic where it's highly repeatable uh and high and highly efficient when it comes to low medium or even high volume uh production Bear with me here. There we go. So to kind of summarize here, um, the reason why you know we wanted to uh, bring solutions like this to the industry is because reviewing a part, um, yes, there's there's cost involved to printing the part, but what we've learned is that up to sixty percent of the parts cost tends to come from post processing just because it's so heavily labor intensive. Um, so coupling great printing technologies with great post-processing solutions provided from, from here at AMT, uh, it can drop not only drive down the cost per part, but really shorten those lead times. And depending on the environment that you're working in, lead times are critical. And so is cost per part, especially if you start scaling into high volumes, you know, 50 cents here, a dollar there can really start to add up. And so that's kind of where we want to stay focused here as AMT is, is provide solutions to the industry that allows uh, for that return on investment to, to really make sense when it comes to audit, uh, additive manufacturing uh, when competing against traditional forms of manufacturing as well. Um, so Try to keep it short and sweet with the time we have here, and I think we'll we'll kind of turn it over here to, to Q and A and kind of open the discussions. All right, thank you, Brad. Uh, so I'm not sure if you could hear me, Brad. So um, we did have a question about dimensional accuracy after vapor smoothing. Uh, how does that process affect your parts? Uh, are we seeing an increase in dimension, decrease, or very minimal? Yeah, no, that's a, a great question. It happens, it comes up a lot. Because um, especially when you say smoothing and melting the surface, a lot of people immediately think, there goes my fine features. We're going to round out corners and do all this kind of stuff. Um, that's not the case. Uh, when the parameters are tuned in correctly for the material and geometry, we what we see as far as dimensional change is, is nominal. Uh, a few thousands here or there. Uh, the range for plus or minus change is a lot smaller than what the printers can provide. And the reason why there's a variation in dimensional accuracy is because we're really just working on that, that outside layer where that partially fused powder is. So we're only working in that small of space. And if you were to zoom in on that surface, it looks like uh, a lot of peaks and valleys, almost like rock candy. And when you measure that, you're measuring the furthest outside peaks. And when we 
melt and redistribute the material, it starts to settle into those valleys and that's that, that change. So we don't grow the part or shrink the part. Uh, we just ever so slightly change that, that boundary layer of partially fused powder and solidify it almost shrink wrap the outside of that part. Thanks, Brad. Uh, another question that we're getting is um, how long does it take for a cycle, both on the vapor smoothing equipment and also the bead blasting equipment? Yeah, for vapor smoothing, uh, the full cycle is uh, 90 to 120 minutes. And so that includes the, the processing, curing, and drying. So once you begin that cycle, it'll process that full batch. And at the end of the run, the parts are finished. There's no post cleaning or washing or drying or anything like that. All that happens within that 90 to 120 minute cycle. And then for depowdering, uh, it, it's, it can be geometry dependent, but on average, it's a 10 to 15 minute cycle time for a full batch of parts. Um, so just kind of, for example, uh, an HP 4200 or 5200 build of parts, if you were to break the parts out and now we move into depowdering and smoothing, you'd be able to process a full build in easily less than three hours, which is involving that automated depowdering and vapor smoothing as well. So incredible turnaround time with really uh, no labor involved. Brad, so yeah, that saves so much human labor for those of you that have worked with MJF in the past. Um, I know I've spent a lot of time at a bead blast cabinet. And so um, that's about all the time we have for today. So Brad and I will hang around uh, in the background and answer some of these other questions. We have some great questions about uh, how smooth parts can get, uh, as well as what technologies uh, smoothing can work with. So we're going to go ahead and type answers to those questions and publish them. Uh, and once again, thank you all for joining us today. And if you have further questions outside of this webinar, be sure and check out our booths at the Expo. We have HP booths and Mark Forge booths where we'll be able to dive in a little bit deeper on some of your questions. Uh, and we hope you enjoy the, the rest of the conference and, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.